Ahoy mates! So, guess what? You've got a problem with your uh, outboard not charging. The battery, specifically. Um, so, I'm going to go over uh, in this video on how to diagnose a uh, no charge situation. Where your battery is just not getting any voltage from the motor. To maintain your... Uh, your electricals like your fish finder and you know all the stuff that you got going on your your fish finder is now a parasitic draw on your battery so when the engine's running you need to be making some dc power to uh to charge the battery and you're watching this video because your boat's not um so we're going to go over a couple of components that are on here how to test them and uh in th how the system works in theory and uh that'll help you figure out what's going on. Let's uh, jump after it and figure out what's wrong with this Suzuki right here. Okay, the motor in question, 1990, 1997 Suzuki 140DT, also called a PU100, which is that. That is a jet pump, and that's the only reason why this is a PU100 versus a DT140. Regardless, um, we're gonna go over how this particular charge system works um, and how most charge system works. This right here does not have a, uh, a battery return. Technically, well, this actually doesn't even have battery cables going to it because it's pull start. But, uh, but yeah, how this works and how to figure out what's wrong with it. First things first, you need to be able to monitor your voltage. I do mine through my fish finder and on my fish finder, quit touching me, stop, stop. God, these have taken over. Um, yeah, I need to spray or chop or something. That's a lot of work. Anyway, you like this dangly mess? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, so uh, that wasn't me. The previous owner decided to remove this plastic cover and pull all these wires out and tangle them in a giant mess. So I'm actually going to clean that up a little bit. It's not terribly important. The focus on today is why you're not getting any charge. So you monitor your voltage via fish finder or a voltage gauge or a cigarette lighter voltage meter or if you if you really think you have an issue you can just use your multimeter um, to uh, to test some things so what you're going to need um, you're going to need some way to check voltage so get one of these it doesn't have to be this it can be anything like this so this is just a cheap piece of junk I've had forever. Um, I've had to change the batteries in it maybe five times. That's how long I've had it. Um, this is from like early 2001. Um, you can, if you don't have one of these, you're going to need one. And if you're broke like I am all the time, go to Harbor Freight. Sometimes they give them away. I mean, Harbor Freight, they, I think five bucks. Um, and sometimes if you spend 20, you can get one for free. Anyway. You're going to need a digital voltage ohm meter, which is a DVOM. Or, uh, you know, ideally you would have like a Mac or a Snap-on or a Fluke. Would be, Fluke would be the best. But here's what you do with this. First things first, you fire up your motor, put the hose on it, or get it in the river or lake or whatever. Make sure you're not in the way so that you can do some testing. Connect this directly to your battery. Red to red, black to black, positive ground, you know. Don't screw that up. Uh... Check the voltage on the motor or on the battery when the engine's running. If it reads only battery voltage, for example, 12 volts, now you know the engine is not producing anything. Next, while the engine's running and the battery only reads 12, your step two is going to be to disconnect the battery while the engine's running. If the ba if the engine dies because the battery's been disconnected, go ahead and stop right there and go buy yourself a stator, okay? If the engine continues, like no question about it, if the engine continues to run after you've disconnected the battery, at least you know half of your stator is working. So the components in question underneath your flywheel is this round thing in there. It's called a stator. And what it does is it produces voltage, kind of like an alternator. So 
that voltage comes out of lots of wires, okay? And on this particular engine, or actually every outboard, you've got wires that feed the CDI box that, that uh, make the engine run in a nutshell. And then you have wires coming out of that stator that charge the battery in a nutshell. Okay, so if the engine stays running after you've disconnected the battery source and you know you're not getting any charge to the battery, your next step is going to be to figure out if you have any voltage coming out of the stator via the charge wires. So which wires are those? You've got a million wires, you don't know what's what. Okay, so trace them. On this particular setup, there's multiple components to the stator. So this doesn't actually have a physical stator. It has little coil packs around it. Those coil packs, uh, two of them deliver voltage to the CDI box and two of them deliver voltage to the battery. So if you trace the wires, just kind of follow them, you know, like I know for a fact that this one and this one Y together and they go on over to the, uh, I just follow them with my fingers. These go over to the other side of the motor. This one's killing me. I know this video is going to be a little bit uh, wordy. Die. Die. So try to try to catch along and watch it a thousand times if you need to. But So the wires come over to the other side of the motor. Okay. So I know that this is all coming from my stator. Okay. Because I traced those wires through. And your motor is going to have different colored wires, possibly. So I come back on this side, and I see that I've got this red and yellow, and I've got this yellow and yellow. And these are going into a red and yellow, okay? And then I've got other wires going into this same loom that goes over to that other side. So I've got a white and a black. I follow the black, goes to ground, okay? And I follow the white. And the white kind of goes back through, loops around, ends up here. And I just trace it with my fingers and I see that it goes directly to my battery positive. So that tells me, do, 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 do. That tells me that these two are coming from the stator. And this is my ground and this goes back to my battery. Okay, recap. From the stator this is the charge wire that's going to be charging my battery and this is the ground okay now that i know all of that yeah i'm going to try to make this video a an uncut series <clears throat> so the other wires that are coming out of the stator that make the engine run i mean there's going to be several so this particular engine has uh individual trigger wires and individual cdi wires so there's going to be we'll I've got a whole other diff different video about diagnosing a no spark. Feel free to click on my channel and try to find that. I'm not going to tag it up above because, like I said, I'm not going to do a lot of editing on this particular video. But all of that is making the engine run. And this is the focus of today's video of charging the battery. Okay, so how this works. This big magnet up here is spinning in circles when the engine is running, passing by coils, whether that's a fixed solid stator or it's an individual coil pack stator, either way, it's spinning this magnet around those coils and that's producing AC voltage, just because that's the way that that magic works. So AC voltage is coming through here, and if you were to run AC voltage back to your battery, you're going to smoke that sucker. So AC voltage needs to be converted to DC voltage. So you know you're not getting any sort of charge. Oh, look at this guy. Who's that? Who's that? Who is that? Who is that? Where's she at? I'm doing up a YouTube video, Dustin. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, it's wordy and, and oh, this guy. Level up. Level up. Hi, Mr. Okay. Hi, Roxanne. Hi. You say hi to the people. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'll pet you. Hi. And there's my dog, Bubba. Up, Bubba? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're busy. We're busy, Roxanne. Yeah. I know. Level I know. up. Hold on. Are you Level good? up. Oh, this one's for you. There you go, bud.
back to work. Back to work. Okay. What are you doing? Putting the rectifier on. It's done. It's already done. I'm going through uh, this guy right here. This yep. guy. He needs help. So we're trying to figure out uh, how to help him. Gotcha. So we know that we're going to be uh, testing with this thing. Okay. So on here, voltage DC, voltage AC. Switch this over here like that. Whammy. Now, you're going to take one lead and you're going to put it on your battery ground and you're going to take the other lead and you're going to put it in one of these wires. When the engine's spinning via engine running, you're going to want to see AC voltage here. I'm talking like 20 volts AC. Now this particular setup has a low speed and a high speed uh, stator. So you're going to have charge at low speed and you're going to have charge at high engine RPM. So only one of them is probably going to be uh, 20 volts or 30 volts AC, you know, in that area. If you got like six, it's broken. Or the rectifier is back feeding. So you want to see higher AC voltage coming out of one of these wires. You know, ideally both, but you know, in a perfect world, that's not how that's not how this works. So you're going to be checking for voltage here. And if you have voltage here, but you don't have any voltage coming out of the white wire, so that's your back to battery. Okay, so you got. AC voltage going into the rectifier. Rectifier is your block. So it's this funny looking thing right here with the heat sink on it. This is the rectifier, okay? And on your, like on an older Mercury, this is your rectifier. You've got AC voltage coming in. I was using this for uh, temporary because my other one burnt up and we'll go through that. So this pushes AC voltage in, this is DC voltage out. It's just a magic box. Don't worry about how the insides work. So. AC voltage coming into the rectifier, ground, and DC voltage coming out. Now you know how it works. So, engine spinning, disconnect this thing. If you're think if you're wanting to diagnose the stator, unplug all of this. Test these wires using ground and your multimeter, and you're going to test for 20, 30, you know, 40 would be sweet, uh, 18 would be fine too. Test for AC voltage here. If you've got AC voltage here, plug this in, ground it, and then check for battery uh, power here. Check for DC here. If you've got AC coming into this, but no DC out, bad rectifier. Okay? That's how it works. It's a pretty simple system. You just got your stator making charge on those coils going back over to a rectifier that's changing it to DC and then it's going back to your battery. Easy peasy, not too complicated, but you make sure you have things disconnected while testing because otherwise your results may be skewed. Like, like say I stuck the multimeter in right here with all that stuff plugged in and I don't have any AC voltage. That could be because the rectifier is bad, but you don't know with the rectifier connected. So one piece at a time, disconnect it all, test for voltage here, Plug it back in, test for output. Simple as that. If you've got no voltage here, bad stator. If you've got voltage here, but still no voltage out of the rectifier, bad rectifier. That's it. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll uh, catch you guys on the next one.